I wonder what opinion others might have about the uh, facts beyond the senses. And I use the word facts because I'm trying to uh, speculate about what really might be out there. And certainly, certainly there's um, far more than our uh, faculties and imagination have uh, thus de devised and uh, cataloged. That devised isn't the right word. Assessed and cataloged is the right word. And uh, I'm not a mystical person. I don't, uh, my interests don't go that direction. But I do uh, honestly know, and I, I'm certain of it, that there's the great majority of, uh, of information and facts have yet to be discovered. And um, that we may lack our, an ability in our innate brain and capacity of our, our senses to even perceive enough to know really what's going on. Some people uh, you know, can jump to the conclusions, jump to conclusions based on a little bit of evidence without much <clears throat> of a foundation and seem to uh, come up with ideas and opinions and theories that uh, may... Sometimes I wonder if those things simply are, are designed to suit their interests. Try to avoid that myself. Because it doesn't leave you with much. It leaves you with a, a vague sense of... It doesn't leave you with much other than a good feeling. You sometimes feel good about having uh, come up with some idea. But really, uh, is that much? It's, is that much to go on? It's it's like having a warm, it's like having a soft teddy bear to hold on to. It feels good and uh, and and soothing, but it's not the real thing. That's how I feel about uh, this, you know, the speculative world that steps outside the realm realm of uh, what's tangible. Yet sometimes, uh, sometimes I uh, I'm tempted to go a little further right now. I'm seated, I'm seated here for a reason. I've been seated, I've been seated here for uh, quite a while now. You can hear cars. I'm not far from the road. And I'm uh, hiking. This is the first time I've been in this particular part of the woods. And I'm hiking here because it's winter and I wanted to explore a stretch of trail that has been closed by uh, the it was closed maybe 20 odd years ago due to uh, an earthquake that uh, destroyed part of the trail, collapsed into the cliffs, made it impassable. And so instead of rebuilding the trail, they just closed the whole darn thing down. And Japanese being good people that they are following the rules, nobody comes here anymore. And the trail has basically uh, gone back to nature. And it winds through a mountain area where there are uh, mountain highways. And I'm, you can hear the road in the distance there. There are cars going past. Maybe we'll hear some loud motorcycles soon. And uh, I've never come here because most of my hiking is in the warm months and this basically becomes all overgrown. It's impassable in the warm months. It is a green wall everywhere. And uh, there's giant spider webs and there and correspondingly giant spiders are within and, and there are tenuki up here and wild boar. <laughs> a whole host of things. But the tenuki, the tenuki aren't a problem. The boar could be a problem. But it's the spiders and the trees and the weeds and the sweat and the copious hordes of mosquitoes up here, so I don't come here in the summer. So um, my, uh, my uh, chores for the day took me up into the mountains too. I had to go visit a shrine up there. And on the way back I decided to, uh, hey it's winter, dead of winter, uh, and I noticed all the foliage is down. What a great chance to uh, hike up the uh, trail there. First time for me. So I've been hiking up through the trail. Had a nice one up to the top. Got a nice view of the uh, Suruga Bay. It's a beautiful view of Fuji. I'm coming back now. But there's uh, more to this trail. There's more to this forest. Make me jump a little. There's more to this than it's just being a closed trail. Um, this is... And don't worry. Whenever I bring this up, it seems like people are always worried about me. Don't worry. <laughs> As I talk about this subject, it simply means that I, I'm, it's an important subject to me. I like to talk about it. And I worry about people. Don't worry about me, though. I'm okay. This is a suicide forest. It's not the famous one that people know about in Japan. It's another one. It's the Plan B one. 
I know of at least uh, three deaths in this forest here. And uh, when I tell Japanese people that I may go up here one day, they always, uh, the few I've talked to have always tried to dissuade me, no, 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 you don't want to go up there. <laughs> There's some superstitions about this place. Hear the motorcycles down there. And I didn't come up here because it was a suicide forest. I came up here because I wanted to experience this trail. I wanted to get a little glimpse of it. Actually, I'm planning next month to do my uh, first big hike of uh, 2011, and I'm thinking about uh, trying to start the trail where the sound of those bikes are. And try to follow it. It's clear. I mean, I can do it. I'll try to follow it wherever it goes. Try to get around where the cliffs. I mean, these cliffs are precipitous. They're at least. I mean, 500, 700 feet tall, sheer drops. So I have to find a, a safe way around those things where the damage was. But I think I can do it. But just now coming back, coming around this turn here, I uh, this is where I come back to the, the, the idea about the intangible things, the uh, what's out there, the, the ghosts, maybe. I just felt compelled to stop. And I stopped. And I stood stock still for a long time. And I do this kind of thing. I like to think, stop and think and ponder some things, look at the light through the trees, watch what's going on, listen to the sounds of the forest. But this was different. I was just feeling things around. And that's what got me on that train of thought about what more might be out there. Could there be uh, something more to the fact that I stopped here? Could there be something in this forest? A spirit, maybe? The spirit of the forest itself? The spirit of the people that died here? Who came here in despair? And I, I'll confess, as I walked up this trail, I, I did try to picture in my mind, and it was a sympathy thought, to try to picture in my mind what it would be like to be one of those three people that came up here carrying her with an intent and following through on that intent. How lonely and how what a feeling of despair that must be. How uh, very, very tragic. I, uh, a friend of mine is a taxi driver and uh, he told me one night about a, a man that came and look in his eyes about a salaryman who had this look on his eyes and madness despair pain this man that I, my friend is a sensitive man very good English he can describe things very well and the man that we, the man that came to his cab asked to be taken to the famous suicide forest that way now I'm in the middle of nowhere <laughs> suit and tie you know, my, my, uh, my friend refused. He wouldn't do it. He later discovered that one of his uh, co-workers did indeed take the man to the forest and dropped him off in the middle of nowhere. What must that have been like for that man? That 40 minute drive into the, into the mountains to be dropped off in the middle of nowhere to wander into the woods maybe to never come back. What must it have been like for those three people at least the three that I know of here maybe more in this forest these trees around me terrifying. It's enough to arrest one in his uh, steps, to arrest one in his consideration, to uh, bring some thoughts of sympathy and uh, some thoughts of humanity into mind. To heck with pondering about uh, black holes and <laughs> speed of light and other such things. There are uh, such cases where despair can drive one to leave everything. That's really terrible. So, coming back to my original consideration, what might be out here? That I can't measure, at least I don't know how the instruments to measure what's out here. Although I can feel that I stopped in my dead in my tracks and have been sitting here for at least half an hour now. Could there be something more to that? I'm going to sit here for a little longer. And uh, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed, maybe not enjoyed, but have 
found some interest in sharing this time with me. I'm glad I could uh, turn the button on, push the button, and share some thoughts with you, share this place with you. Not to be morbid, not to be provocative, not to be to get views or anything like that. No, I'm going to have to come up with a title for this video that's very, uh, very sedate. I don't want to. I'm not a... That's not what this is about. This is, this is about the bigger thing. What's back there? What is back there that we can't see? I'm going to think about that for now. I'm going to say goodbye to you. Take care of yourself. Be, be good to one another. I'm, I'm going to take those words myself. Be good to, so I'm going to leave this mountain a little bit. Go down. I'm going to be good to my family and my neighbors and my friends. I'm going to be good to those in need. Good to those in pain. I'm going to be uh, good to the world to the best of my capacity. Maybe that's all I can do. Maybe these messages, these, this sense of this vibration from the woods, from the world around us that we all perceive but can't quite can't quite describe. Maybe that's the message. Take care, everybody. I hope that person takes care, too. Bye-bye.